Hey guys! So today you and I are going to talk about problem solving. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, what books slash resources would you recommend to improve problem solving in general? Well, uh, I wouldn't recommend you trying to learn problem solving in general for a very specific reason and that is because I don't believe that it's a good idea for you to try to move away from the sort of concrete problems that you are trying to solve. So some people think about this in, in a different way where for example mathematics is in essence a general way for you to express a solution to a given problem. But what I argue to you is that the the, the usage of mathematics, unless it's just your field of study, but when you want to apply it, applied mathematics, if you will, is always tied into something concrete. It can be economics, physics, chemi I mean, you, you can guess, right? There can be a ton of application areas for the thing that you're trying to do. And so what I try to tell people, try to suggest to people is that it's better for you to try to solve a specific problem because in order to solve a specific problem you will figure out what tools you need in order to solve that problem and that will get you closer to the skill sets that you need to actually make something practical happen because as I said the reverse is that you basically learn the theory of something and then try to find a way to apply your theory to something that can work but I've always found that practical application of a skill or trying to solve something concrete forces you to learn that anyway but it's an easier way to go about it and it's more tie it will actually give you in my opinion at the very least a broader set of skills because um, as an example if you wanted let's say that your problem is that uh, you want to be a really good team lead or senior software developer or something like that in say if in this case we're talking about programming well that's not something you're gonna do by learning how to for example solve trivia puzzles or you know I can give you a book on general problem solving and sure that's gonna give you some ideas like divide and conquer and you think like there are these mental tools and so forth that you might need you might uh, think of but I mean you can google that like that and you're gonna be covered in almost every area that you can possibly imagine so what I but what I suggest to you which is the thing that most people don't understand is that if you wanted to become a senior software developer for example it the question you have to ask is what skills does what do you need to be a senior software developer or something similar and to give you sort of an example of what I'm talking about very few developers understand that by learning something that is relevant to the skills that they need and really truly mastering that they will actually pick up quite a lot of stuff even if they didn't intend to so as I was saying an example would have been if you wanted to be a physicist you're gonna have to pick up some mathematics to do that because it's sort of part of the skills that you need just as a baker needs to be able to run a business if they want to have a bakery or similar sorts of things you as a professional software developer let's say that you're a back-end developer for example now very few back-end developers understand that that if you focus uh, and try to really master how to write clean modular code in say a domain driven fashion well if you're really good at creating interfaces and modules and having good abstractions at the code level it's very likely that you will have developed a sixth sense for how to modularize and scale an entire system because the may like there are differences of course but a lot of the core concepts, the theoretical things that you have to understand you know, in, uh, to create say a microservices system or an entire architecture, they overlap enormously with the theory of creating good abstractions uh, with just regular objects or classes or whatever you're using right when you're basically writing code. I've said this in a few videos before guys that the difference between a microservices system and a really well structured and modular monolith is actually not that great in terms of logic uh, I mean of course you have persistence layers and you have like network communication you have all these other things that you need to take care of in the, at the infrastructure level but if we just look at the domain and business logic 
it's very very similar it's almost identical I would say I will even go as to say, far as to say that most miss that a well structured modular uh, monolith when you turn that into a microservice system, microservices system, if you've done it correctly, you're basically just lifting out a folder or a class or something like that and putting a network control, like a network, a, a web server and some network interface on it, and then they communicate over two servers, whereas they used to work on in one server before. That's actually something that people don't fully understand. So by just learning how to do that, you learn something else. Or say front-end developers, uh, if you want to become a really efficient uh, front-end developer, well, if you learn how to write maintainable code and you know how to do the proper level of testing to make sure that the system is always working, then you have already taken uh, take you have taken steps towards basically becoming an effective team lead because the sort of problems that you have to solve in order to be an effective team lead or be a true senior front-end developer a true senior back-end developer etc etc it's not just one thing you have to get good at it's a like a multitude of different skills that are necessary to do it efficiently and so that's why I tell people that the thing that you should ask is not how do I in general become good at problem solving because there are no people who are just generally good at solving problems and then you they go and like fix everything it's usually the case that you try to solve a concrete problem something that you want to solve you learn from that experience and then you try another problem and then another problem and the more problems you try out it's soon sooner or later you're going to see that there's going to be overlap all across the place and s before you know it you are one of those sort of people who have basically learned all the skills necessary to basically solve any problem so what I want you to take away from this is that I usually don't suggest people uh, to people to go and uh, just learn general problem solving because I don't believe that that's an efficient way for you to get meaningful product and meaningful results and get productive with something uh, in essence it's better for you to think about the sorts of issues or the sort of problems that you want to be able to be able to solve and focus on those instead because just by solving that problem you're going to learn something and a lot of it's going to translate into something else the thing that people usually make as a mistake which they, they have this idea that they just want to be good at problem solving well go and solve a lot of problems because the time you get to be good at solving problems is when you actually go and solve them the thing that makes people usually only able to solve one problem be really very niche or something like they don't want to like they is when they don't do that when they stop when they get complacent and they stop trying to do different things or learn different things and this is the number one thing I see the people who do really really well as software developers or we, when we talk about solving problems within IT are usually the people who just try solving an issue try their best figure out how to do it it might not be the best solution in the world but they get it to work and then they do that again and again and again and they try different problems or problems that are similar or slightly different and they just keep on going because that iteration that practice is the thing that gives them this more well, they, it gives them experience and wisdom. It leads ultimately to wisdom. And that's the beautiful part about wisdom. When you have it in an area where multiple things are sort of similar, or they overlap, you can draw upon that wisdom in more and more problems the more you know, basically. So that's what I suggest to you, rather than trying to just be generally good at problem solving. Have a great day.